What is going on, everyone? How about we do a positive video? We've got enough negative stuff in our lives right now. Maybe a little break from the negativity is due. Positive videos never do well on YouTube. That's why I really don't do them that much. And it's not just my channel. It's other list channels and travel channels. I'd love to do nothing but positive videos. I honestly would. I just like to pay my mortgage, my car insurance, and eat things other than Top Ramen. Positive videos make about 30% in income that a negative video does. I guess people just like hearing me roast places. Today, we're going to start a series about the best neighborhoods in America you could buy a home. I'd like to do a bunch of these, so if you want to see more of them, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up, leave a comment, watching a video to the end really helps, and share it on your social media, that helps too. So how do you decide what is a great neighborhood? Well, you look at things like monthly housing costs, public school grades, home value to income ratio, crime and safety, home ownership, and of course, cost of living. Cost of living kills a lot of places in this country that could be on this list. If you're pulling in 500k a year, chances are your neighborhood won't be on this list because, you know, there are a lot of really, really good neighborhoods that are extremely expensive. We're really not focusing on those. You know, nobody needs to see a bit video about Beverly Hills. Of course, it's a great place to live. It's just too expensive. All these stats other than crime come from the U.S. Census Bureau. If you have a problem with the stats, then talk to them. Now, I'm sure I'm going to miss some that a lot of you think should be on this list. Let me know in the comment section. Before. I would love to look it up and maybe put it on the next video. So that was a long winded intro. So in no particular order, let's start the list off with number 10. Cave Springs, Arkansas. You heard me right, I said Arkansas. But this town is in the northwest section of Arkansas, and like I've said in other videos, the Fayetteville, Springdale, and Rogers area, which is in the northwest section, are nothing like the rest of Arkansas. This town is a perfect example of that. Cave Springs is a suburb with a population of just about 4,000 people. Cave Spring is in Benton County. It's one of the best places to live in Arkansas, and actually the country. Cave Springs is actually safer than 79% of the cities in the United States, and the poverty level is 80 3% lower than the national average. Those are solid numbers. Living in Cave Springs offers the residents like a rural feel, and most of the residents here own their own home, which nothing bad against renters, it's just when people own their own home, they tend to care about the neighborhood a little bit more. So this helps with the whole no crime and everything else like that. The public schools in Cave Springs are highly rated. They've got solid scores across the board. Now I'm going to give you my opinion from looking up the prices online about houses. The average move-in ready home Home in this town is between 250000 and 325000 If you want to spend over 500000 you're getting a house that would probably go for about $2 million to $3 million in the nicer areas of California. On top of that, the cost of living in this town is equal to the U.S. average, and they've got homes to sell. This is a great town. Number nine, Madison, Alabama. This is another shocker. Most of the time on this channel, we discuss the negatives about Alabama whenever the Yellowhammer state is brought up. I mean, this is a state that has had billboards reminding the population that doing the nasty with a close relative is illegal. I'm not even kidding. They have those. The Huntsville area is different from the rest of Alabama, and that's where we find this suburb of Madison. Overall, it's a really nice town with a huge amount of tech jobs and great schools. The nightlife is getting better. They got a Dave and Buster's and a top golf. The overall crime rate in Madison is about 44% lower than the national average, and the unemployment rate is 25% lower than the national average. Now, they don't even have a lot of people that are struggling too much. I mean, every place has them, but the poverty level is 62% lower than the national average, so people are getting paid, and they're working here. You can get a new home in a good neighborhood in Madison for around $225,000 to maybe $300,000. The big dollar, really nice homes go from $400,000 on up. This is a great part of Alabama. Alabama. Number eight, Carmel, Indiana. Carmel originally was called Bethlehem, Indiana, and it sits just north of Indianapolis. They changed the name to Carmel because it sounded sweeter. Yes, comedy gold. To be clear, Carmel is nice, Indianapolis is bad. Carmel has all the right stats in all the right places. That sounded a lot creepier than I wanted it to sound, but moving on. Carmel is ranked as the best medium city in Indiana, and it's also considered the best town to raise a family in the Hoosier State. The schools have high grades, and the park and rec department has a really cool water park. Really, this is like, it almost is as good as one you like really pay to get into, like a commercial, like a privately owned one, you know, a nice water park. This one looks really nice. I was shocked. It's just a city park. 
Park, basically. The healthcare is graded high, and their crime rate in Carmel is like nothing. It's 79% lower than the national average. They've got people working there, too. The unemployment rate's 49% lower than the national average. Poverty level in Carmel is 76% lower than the national average. Like I said, they got all the right stats in all the right places. You can get a three-bedroom brick home built in the last, let's say, 10 years for less than 300000 Like, two twenty-five to 300000 I saw some that are in the 500000 but those are like estates almost. Solid place to live. I'm going to visit next time in Indianapolis. Number seven, Liberty, Missouri. Liberty is a suburb of Kansas City with a population of about 30,000 people. Liberty is in Clay County and it's one of the best places to live in Missouri. It's voted the best place to live in Clay County. Missouri gets a bad rap most of the time because of its major cities being sort of a nightmare. Liberty is the furthest thing from a nightmare. It's more like a dream for someone buying a house. And that's why it made this list. More on that in a minute. Liberty doesn't have much crime. The overall crime rate here is 36% lower than the national average, and not many people live in poverty. It's actually 55% lower than the national average. The schools here are outstanding, and here comes the good part. You can get a home that maybe needs a coat of paint and a once-over with a lawnmower for under $150,000. Sure, it'll be a little older, but if you want to take a step up and get something newer with three or four bedrooms, like built in the last decade, you're looking at $220,000. In Liberty, people think you're rich if your house is like worth over $600,000. Also, Liberty's a solid place to choose. It is the last like town, I guess you could say, before you hit miles and miles of farmland in Missouri. So it's kind of got that rural feel, but it's right there at Kansas City. It's kind of weird. Number six, Horace, North Dakota. This is a hidden gem in North Dakota. Just south of Fargo along the Cheyenne River, you find the little town of Horace. North Dakota is a great state in every way if you don't mind really brutal winters. Their winters are rough, so if you take that off the table, this is a great place to live. The little town of Horace has a lot to offer someone who likes the outdoors. If you YouTube Horace or the Cheyenne River, you'll see nothing but people kayaking and fishing all along the river. It's really nice. They're also developing, uh, I think, one or two communities called Lost River. I found a video from the development company. They had some poor girl who, she was very attractive, but I guess she didn't have time to learn her lines because she spent more time glancing at her notes than I did doing a sixth grade book report. It was it was distracting, to say the least. They have next to zero crime in Horace. Their overall crime rate is about 83% lower than the national average. The unemployment rate is 76% lower than the national average. The poverty level in Horace is 87% lower than the national average. So people got money and they're not ripping each other off. So that's a good thing. You can get a good livable home for as low as $150,000 in Horace. If you want something new, you're talking two twenty to maybe 400000 If you go past that, you're like a rich dude, okay? Horace is a nice place to live. Number five, Glendale, Missouri. Glendale is a suburb of St. Louis, but don't let that scare you. Glendale has very little crime. Unless you consider a real estate agent telling you St. Louis isn't that bad a crime. I had a real estate agent from St. Louis email me about a video on how bad St. Louis was. He sent me a bunch of stats and told me I should take down my video and upload it with the current stats. Now, he typed out all these stats. There was no links. I asked him for a link to those stats, and he told me in the email, don't worry about it, just do it. Yeah, that's what he really replied with. Don't worry about it it, just do it. I gotta tell you, I was tempted to make a video about him, but YouTube has this thing about targeting people, so they might come down on me, so I just let it go. I didn't want to, but I let it go. Can you believe the balls of that guy? Anyway, moving on. Other than D-bag real estate agents, Glendale is a really nice place to live. This one is a little more expensive compared to the rest on this list, but it has great stats, and it isn't far from a major city, but just far enough to make it nice. The homes range anywhere from 200000 needing a little work, to newly built homes for 500 thousand and up. Most of the time you're going to find decent homes to live, three bedrooms for around the 350,000 area. Definitely not a bad place to live. Number four, Ottawa Hills, Ohio. Now, for those of you who just fell out of your chair, I did say Ohio. Ohio has pockets that are really nice. Yes, even Cleveland. I know that's hard to believe. Ottawa Hills is a suburb of Toledo with a population of about 4,500 people in Lucas County, and it's one of the best places to live in Ohio. This small, tree-filled community has amazing older brick homes just waiting for you. You just have to worry about the wind shifting because Toledo is right down the road, and it smells. It does. The place stinks. Sort of like a dumpster shift. 
shared by a Mexican and a Vietnamese restaurant. The overall crime rate in Ottawa Hills is 69% lower than the national average. The poverty level in Ottawa Hills is about 84% lower than the national average. All of their schools are graded very high. Now, like I said, this place is a great place, really close to a bad place. So that's why the property values are pretty cheap. But they have no crime, so it kind of works out. A well-maintained, in good shape, older brick home will set you back about $220,000. They do have other houses that are more expensive, but that's about the average, somewhere in that neighborhood. Number three, Mount Vernon, Iowa. Mount Vernon is a great small town of about 4,500 residents. One person described Mount Vernon like this. It's a warm, welcoming community, and it's a good sign to meet so many families who have grown up here and then have moved back after college to work and raise their children. I've enjoyed the bars. I thought that was a weird transition. Talk about raising kids, and then they let us know that they may have a drinking problem. <laughs> it was just weird. Anyway, Mount Vernon, like most of Iowa, has land that tends to be on the inexpensive side. It's a little high for Iowa, but compared to the rest of the country, it's cheap, especially when you consider what you're getting. If you want to keep your mortgage around $200,000, you can get a nice older home. If you feel like doubling that and get around the $400,000 area, you can get a newer home with about a half an acre on it. Most of the houses are about a quarter acre, so you get a little land when you move to Iowa in the first place. Even in the cities, their lots seem to be a little bit bigger. The overall crime rate in Mount Vernon is 87% lower than the national average, and their poverty level is 68% lower than the national average. You're only about 30 minutes away Away from Cedar Rapids, which isn't a terribly big city, but it'll have all you need. This is a really good choice, especially if you have kids, because the schools are outstanding in Mount Vernon. Number two, Bethlehem, West Virginia. Now I'm going to get some flack for this one, but hear me out. Bethlehem is a great place because of the cost and the outdoors. West Virginia is slowly becoming known as a hotspot for the action sport types and people who just want to get outdoors. Maybe go for a hike, fish, shoot something, I don't know. In the hills above Wheeling, West Virginia, not too far from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you have Bethlehem, West Virginia with its 2,500 residents. When you look at the stats compared to the rest of West Virginia, this place becomes very attractive. Kind of like me around 2 a.m. and nobody else is in the bar. The unemployment rate in Bethlehem is 21% lower than the national average. There are other places in West Virginia where the unemployment rate is about 120% higher than the national average. Not even kidding. The poverty level is pretty good here, too. It's 37% lower than the national average. Again, there's places in West Virginia that are so much worse. They have very low crime, and you can get a decent older home for around $120,000. If you want one that needs some work, you're looking at $60K. I'm not even kidding. $60,000 will get you in a livable house that you're going to have to do some work on, but you own the house. Most lots come with about a quarter acre. The cost of living and housing are very low in Bethlehem. This is a perfect place for someone that can work remotely for their company, a retiree, or a hot girl with a webcam, I imagine. And number one, Heston, Kansas. Heston, Kansas is a small town that's like a family, as one resident described it. They also said that everyone knows everyone, like how small towns are. The schools are a gift, as another resident explained, and I looked it up. They have really good schools here. They also have Heston College, which I found to be a little weird. Not the college, but how big this liberal arts college is compared to how small the town is. But hey, nothing wrong with focusing on education, right? Heston is about 30 minutes from Wichita and light years in how the cities are. Wichita's a nightmare, Heston's really nice. Heston has an overall crime rate that's 57% lower than the national average, and their poverty level in Heston is 28% lower than the national average. And again, like I said, polar opposite of what's going on in Wichita. Wichita sucks. So, the town is in Kansas, and that should tip you off right away that the land is cheap and the cost of living is low. This is a common theme for this part of the country. The cost of living in Heston is 18% lower than the national average, and you can get into a nice older home for about $150,000. A newer home, like let's say built in the last decade or so, will set you back about $250,000. These are nice homes with good sized lots on them. So if you're a retiree looking to, you know, bed down for the rest of time, this might be a good place. I like it. It's a really nice looking small town, a lot of things to do, and far enough away from cities where you could just have a nice relaxing life. I'd live here in a heartbeat if I could be that far away from the ocean. I don't know if I could. All right, so that is today's video, the top 10 best places to buy a house in the United States for 2020. I could do probably three of these lists. If we get enough likes on it and we get enough comments, enough views, share this on your social media. We'll do a couple more of these. I'd really like to. We'll stay a little positive while this stuff's going on. Anyway, everyone stay healthy. Don't forget all the links below. Give the video a big thumbs up. Like I said, subscribe if you haven't. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.